From login and registration screens to checkout pages, forms are arguably the most important and valuable tool for communicating with the end users of our applications and collecting valuable information from them. Vue makes it fun and easy to build a wide array of forms, ranging from single input forms like a search bar, to very complex schema-driven forms, thanks to its component-driven architecture and reactivity system. Vue is, of course, a component-based framework, where we can create a bit of code and reuse it throughout our application in a package container called a component. These components communicate with each other via props and events, and through these connections we create a dynamic application. Forms in particular benefit greatly from encapsulating the logic of input elements into components. As our applications grow, our forms usually grow too, and having forms that are built without components usually becomes a ticking time bomb. At some point, you might need to change the look and feel of your elements, or perhaps make them behave differently in relation to their label, or even introduce a new type of validation. All of these scenarios become exponentially more complex when your inputs in your form are not encapsulated into components. In this course, we will build a set of components that will handle the most common cases for form inputs in your applications. They will be highly reusable, but also adaptable to scale for any of your application needs. While building these components, we will reinforce the fundamental concepts of how components communicate with each other and your form through props, events, listeners, attributes, and so on. We will go through the best practices on how to capture and submit our forms. And finally, we will touch up on the basics of accessibility. With these concepts and new tools under your developer tool build, you will be able to understand and build any range of forms for your own applications. In order to get the most out of this course, you should have experience with the following topic. A basic understanding of what vModel is and how it interacts with native input elements. If you aren't familiar with it, I recommend that you check our Intro to Vue 3 course. We will incorporate these concepts while focusing on how Vue 3 simplifies and empowers form component composition. Throughout this course, we will be building a set of reusable form components and exploring best practices along the way. In order to build this, we'll want a demo form to use as a starting point, which we will break apart into these base components. I've prepared one so that we can jump right in. We have a form that includes a couple of different input elements. A select element for the category, a few input elements of type text, a radio input, and two checkboxes. Everything in this form is vModeled. Let's look at the code behind this. Here's a code for the form that we just saw. As you can see, it contains the HTML code for all the input elements that we just saw in the browser. Let's now scroll down to our script section. Inside the export default, we have our data function. Inside the return object, we have a categories array that is being used to power the select element. We also have an event object. Each of its properties are being bound into one of our elements in the form. The goal of this lesson is to create a base input component. Whenever we are building forms in Vue, creating reusable form components for each specific input type will allow us to replicate them modify them and extend them. This also ensures that throughout our form and even throughout our whole application, our inputs will be consistent. Let's dive right in and create our first component. We're gonna get started by going into the components folder and creating the base input.view file. We will also add the template that will hold our code. Now I will go to the simple form.view component and copy in the code for the first element. I'm going to copy the label and the input and bring it over to our base input.view component. We are going to transform this static code into something more reusable and flexible. After all, that's the benefit of making components. In Vue 3, we can have multiple root nodes. This means we can have the label and the input 
at root level without needing to wrap them in a single root element like a div, like we had to in Vue 2. Let's check out the things that we need to do in order to make this component completely reusable and flexible. First, we're going to add a label property. Then we need to figure out how to allow vModeling into our component. Finally, we're going to look at how to bind the dollar sign actors object into our component correctly. The first thing we need to do is to allow our component to receive a label from the parent. To do this, we're going to create a label property. Let's go ahead and add the script and the export default and the props object. We'll create a label property with the type of string and a default of an empty string. Now we can use our new label property through interpolation inside our templates label element. While we're at it, we're going to delete the vModel directive since we're no longer going to be using it inside the component. We'll come back to using vModel later on. We will also delete type because it will be provided as part of the attributes by the parent. Remember that we want to keep the component as flexible as possible. The user of this component may want to make it of type email or password, and the default for input is already of type text if not declared. Finally, let's bind the placeholder attribute to our label property as well. This will make sure that both the hint text inside the input and the actual label are coordinated and reactive. Now that our component has its basic structure and the label, we can move to adding the capability for our component to be vModel ready. By default in Vue 3, vModel expects a property named model value to be on your vModel capable component. Let's go ahead and add this new property and then bind it to the value attribute of our input. We will add the model value property here with the type of string or number and default it to an empty string. There is a good chance that the parent may try to bind either a text or string like hello to our input, but it may also try to bind a numeric value like the user's age or 30. We need to be able to allow either to be set. Let's go ahead and add the value binding and bind it to our new property model value. Now that we have our model value property set and bound to the input attribute of the input element, let's look at the second part of the vModel two-way binding, emitting an event. All components that are capable of being vModeled have to emit an event in order for the parent to be able to catch the updates to that component's data. In Vue 3, by default, all vModel contracts expect for your component to emit an update model value event regardless of what type of input or inputs your component contains. Let's go ahead and add an input event listener to our input element and emit an update model value event whenever an input element occurs. Let's go ahead and add the input event listener. We're going to dollar sign emit the update model value event and as the payload, we will pass event target dot value. Adding this input listener to our input element allows us to fire off the required event every time the user types something into the input field. Notice that we're passing the event's target value event.target.value as the payload of the event. This is the value that the vModel will receive on the parent. Speaking of the parent, let's go back to our form and use the new base input component instead of our native elements to test out our code. We will replace title, description, and location inputs in our form with our new component. Let's navigate back to simple form. We will add our first base input here and it will replace the title. So we will bind vModel again to event.title. Next, we will set the label property equal to title. Finally, we will add a type of text. We can now delete the original code. Remember that label is not an attribute, 
It is the property that we created in the beginning of this lesson. Next, let's add another base input for our description. We will add a vModel binding to event.description. Next, we will set our label equal to description. And finally, the type equal to text. We can now delete the original code. Let's go ahead and do this one more time for our location. We will create another base input instance. Then we will vModel it to event.location. We will set our label property equal to location and our type equal to text. We can then again delete the original code. Let's go ahead and look at this in the browser. At the moment of this recording, the Vue 3 developer tools are still in beta. I've gone ahead and added the output of our vModel bindings here into the form so that we can see it in action. I'm going to go ahead and write something into our inputs. Our component seems to be working, but there seems to be a problem with the styles. If we inspect the component further, it seems that our type attribute is nowhere to be found. We want to be able to assign attributes like type into the component's input when we set them on the instance in the parent. Let's take a look at how to achieve this. Before we go into the code, let's check out our to-do list. We've added the label property. We've made sure that vModeling works into our component. Now we will look into how to bind the actors object correctly. In Vue, whenever you pass down attributes, classes, and styles from the parent to a child, like we are doing with the type in our base input component, Vue will attempt to automatically figure out where inside your template these attributes should be injected. In components with a single wrapping element, also known as single root components, this behavior is very straightforward. Vue will simply inject all the attributes, classes, and styles into the root element. In multi-root components, such as our base input, Vue cannot figure out with our help which one of the nodes or fragments it should inject the attribute to. So Vue simply gives up and issues a warning. In the case of our base input component, we want to be able to inject attributes directly into the input. So we have to manually bind the actors object to it. Let's go ahead and do that now by binding the actors into our input element. Let's go ahead and add a bbind declaration here. Inside of this declaration, we will add dollar sign actors. With this small change, the input elements will now correctly receive the type binding from the parent and our CSS classes will be applied. Let's check this out in the browser. Everything is looking a lot better now. Let's see if it still works. Everything seems to be working correctly. In this lesson, we learned how to create our first component, the base input. We also learned how to create a component that is vModel ready. Did you notice that we never actually imported base input in our form component before we used it? I don't want you to worry about that right now. In lesson four, we will go into detail about the magic that happens behind the scenes in order to accomplish this. In our next lesson, we will build our next form component, the base select. See you there.